welcome back to some Netrunner from Eudaimonia. This is a store in Berkeley, California. This was just a game night kit. And I wanted to show this video because we have some Cybernetics Division on the left and Haley on the right. So some uh, new IDs to check out. And uh, I have with me the, helping to commentate, the second place finisher at the Tacoma Washington Regionals. Nathan, how are you doing today, Nathan? Hey, man, I'm good. And uh, how are you how are you feeling about these IDs here at the table? I am actually very excited about this game. Uh, I actually tested Cybernetics for probably a month before they were released, uh, and also um, Haley as well. And uh, I definitely felt like Cybernetics was a more difficult ID to build for. And we have the players here. I am playing on the left. That's Brian, and Adam is on the right playing Haley. And so this this uh, Cybernetics deck, I can speak about. I can speak about both decks. I've played against Adam's deck quite a bit. The Cybernetics deck is not necessarily a kill deck. It, it has a kill option with two Neural MPs, and it obviously has some ways to hit some brain damage and less uh, lower the hand size of the runner. But it also has the ability to fast advance a little bit, and it's doing a lot of motion Notion. So a lot of motion Notion. It also is trying to score mandatory upgrades with motion Notion. So that's kind of what's going on here. The Haley deck is... Uh, you know, it has, I believe, Magnum Opus. It's, I don't think it's stealth. Uh, if I'm remembering right, maybe it does have a little bit of stealth. <laughs> maybe I don't know the deck as well as I thought I do. But anyway, that's generally what's going on here. Haley does well with stealth, because she gets all those extra free installs, even if you're not necessarily going, like, super crazy on it. Right. And pretty good start here from... From Adam, he's a sure gamble, trashes my Adonis campaign, and gets Magnum Opus on the personal workshop. Beautiful. So pers personal workshop, really good for Haley. So he basically went even on your opening play, but you're uh, you're, you're two ice ahead now. Um, so what are you what are you looking to do? Are you looking to just try to rush out an agenda here? I think initially, uh, it depends what's in my hand. Uh, I don't know if I'm a little flooded or not. If I'm flooded, I'll often go into desperation mode. But I, the only thing I want to rush out is the brain chips, defective brain chips. Sure. Other than that, I don't really, like, you know, motion Notion mandatory upgrades would be great. Um, but I'm not really in a rush mo uh, mode here. I'm more in an econ mode, I think. So he trashed the Adonis early, which was pretty bad for me. Eli rezzed. And I'll be very happy if he lets me end the run, because the successful demo was in the deck, I believe, at this point. Ooh, successful demo is so good. It's the same money as Restructure, but different requirement. Yeah, it pays you to res your ice, right? Yeah, that is that is such a powerful pacing card, um, especially early game. It can just, like, pay for an agenda. Eventually, I did take successful demo out of the deck, just because I needed more... Uh, reusable econ the the decks you know 44 cards it's a uh, cyber next division is a 4015 id so there's less cards in the deck and i needed more reusable econ okay so jackson howard in that remote and it looks like i drew into the successful demo oh nice very nice yeah, unfortunately, when you only have a, a 44 card deck, uh, deck slots, they feel so much more important. And actually, the way the math works out, you're one agenda short, so uh, the, the deck uh, percentages are actually very similar, but um, but it sure doesn't feel that way when you're playing it. <laughs> yeah, that's something worth discussing, is that uh, having the defective brain chips in Cybernext Division is a blessing and a curse. It's I mean, it's a really great agenda for Cybernext Division. It's nice for Never Advance, but... It takes up deck slots, and you have basically the same agenda density as normal ETF deck, but you have five less cards. That's right. That's right. So I, I would often find myself in a situation where I, I felt like I was getting a little bit flooded. Um, and so he trashes the, the second Adonis campaign. I, I, I guess I drew it that turn, but it would have been nicer to have that behind the ice there where the Jackson is. It's kind of hard to tell, because he, uh, he sure gambled that turn, so... I think so, you know, he basically trade a sure gamble for an Adonis campaign. Yes, and here is that Mushin Ocean that we saw earlier. So this is really tough, so th because if, if this is an overrider, I mean, you can't you can't let that be an overrider. Well, here's the thing. Look, he has Boxy installed, so I probably... This, this probably wasn't a great call. If this is an agenda, he's kind of extra motivated to go check it. Hmm. 
because he sure. can absorb that that brain damage through that boxy. Sure. Boxy increasing the hand size by two, so he would really lose a hand size of one. Now, Boxy's an interesting include in Haley uh, because why not like Astrolabe? But um, in my playing of Haley, uh, having a lot of cards just to trigger her ability because you have more cards in hand, you have more options. Uh, the biggest reason I don't use her ability is because I don't have enough resources, hardware programs in my hand. So just by having more in hand, you're more likely to be able to activate her ability, which is actually better in Haley than than one might expect, I should say. And that, I, you know, that is, I believe, half the motivation for Boxy here. But the main motivation, honestly, is stim hack. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he loves the stim hack in this deck because he can just unload those credits really easily with Workshop and his cards in hand. He could dump stim hack credits really easily. But uh, I don't think he's likely to stim hack too much against Cyber Next Division right. here. Sure, interesting. Uh, okay, sure, absolutely. I, I have uh, developed a love for stim hack myself in the recent past so much so that I actually put a brain cage in my Haley deck uh, so I can just tag it along a clone chip and be like clone chip brain cage cool now I can stim hack twice wait what oh I see yeah with Haley ability you install the brain cage with the the clone chip yes okay I thought you were trying to claim something crazy like clone chip also works on hardware and I just never realized yeah dude I just uh, you know I, <laughs> I bring it back <laughs> multiple brain cages so, uh, yeah, that, that, that just that motion notion I'm still thinking about. Um, it looks like he might just ignore it, because I think this is his fourth click. Yeah, so just getting the RDI. So I might have got lucky. I might have snuck something out here. I bet he's not expecting mandatory upgrades. That would be crazy. Uh, I, yeah, you know, I'm not sure at the time if he would have been. Um, he eventually knew that I had. So that was just the brain brain chips. So his hand size is decreased by one. That's a good move because it, you know, it's not a lot of risk uh, for a lot of value. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, the, you know, I in playing this deck, I would motion notion a lot of stuff. Another successful demo. That was perfect timing too because I was down to five credits. Um, runners just won't usually risk it unless they have some backup. You know, like he has that boxy sitting there. So that's why I was saying he, he might have taken the risk just because he knows he has Boxy to right. kind of sustain that brain damage. Right. But, um, yeah, so if once he installs Boxy, he's back up to his five hand size, which is sort of depressing as Cybernetics Division. But here is another motion notion. Well, I mean, right, if you hit if you hit an Overrider here, he's down to a hand size of zero, Boxy takes him up to two. That's pretty, that's pretty crazy. Yeah. I, I was also playing against people recently that were doing things like uh, public sympathy. Uh, so th there's been a lot of... <laughs> I don't know why, but when I was playing this deck, I was just playing a lot of people who had, had hand size increases. Maybe because the ID was just released when this tournament was That was, was definitely uh, one of the problems I had when I was experimenting with it. Is like if someone runs just like anything to stop my damage, the kill becomes way harder. It's totally different than Jinteki. Or, or maybe it's not. I don't play Jinteki, but... It's like, oh, when, you know, when, you, you've got a deus ex, now it's almost impossible for me to kill you. Yeah, I think that's similar to Jinteki. At least PE, you know, that if they drop certain cards. I had someone who was doing Titanium Ribs and Brain Cage against me the other day, and it was extremely difficult to get a kill like that. <laughs> Dang, homie. Dang. Yeah. Oh, he's going in. So click two, running in. I think he's going to get an agenda. That's my guess. Yeah. Oh, man, over Vitruvius. Oh, that's so good. Bring back your motions. Yeah, yeah, I, I love to over advance that Vitruvius. The first iteration of this deck, I, I built it and started playing it, and then I was like, I feel like it's missing something. And then I re realized, oh, yeah, I didn't include Jackson Howard. So <laughs> my first, uh, you know, like five, six games with this deck, I was just always trying to rush uh, over advanced Vitruvius super early, because if I didn't get that, I would just lose the game. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> So the thing about Vitruvius, because I, I really like to over-advance it well, but if it's like your first agenda and you over-advance it, it costs so much money to do it. I mean, there's just two extra credits, basically. Um, it's That's where Mushin Notion right? helps. Right, Mushin helps out a ton, right? It just relieves that early yeah. pressure. Uh, so that's fantastic. Yeah, you can you can get, essentially, you get three tokens on it for free, and you don't really have to build a remote to score it out of. You just hope that they're not going to take a risk running it. 
which doesn't always work clearly. Sure. The deck also, it has three Mushin and three Overriders, so the threat is real. Just uh, Sure, I really, I really like your overriders. agenda loadout so far. I mean, I haven't seen the man ups, but you told me the mandatory upgrades were in here. Yeah, there's there's a couple. There's a couple mandatory upgrades. Uh, I, so you're running, I, I score them pretty often, too. So you're running basically Brain Trips, Vitruvius, uh, mandatory upgrades. Uh, ABT. Else? ABT. Yeah, it's three ABT. Th wait, I think three ABT, three Vitruvius, two man up, and two brain chips. Is that up to eighteen? It's something like that. Uh, that is eighteen. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, that's the load out. So, yeah, and the the brain chips are super nice, but that agenda density is not so great. So, you know, right. and with Mushin Notion, it's really tempting to put a five three in there. Um, I, you know, I don't know what I'd include. Utopia Utopia Fragment Shard would be nice. You know, as much as I like 5-3s, um, the big reason is, is they allow you to motion um, something... I mean, they allow you to motion something and actually get a good reward from it, other than, you know, an over-advanced Vitruvius. That doesn't win you the game, but a 5-3 does. Right. Um, however, mandatory upgrades really does fill a role so close to that that it's, it's okay. I think it's okay that you're not running 5-3s. The idea with mandatory upgrades in this deck was I have a, a, a way to score them in two turns, you know, where they don't require, theoretically, they don't require a lot of protection. And then once I score one mandatory upgrade, I could fast advance the rest of my agenda. Right, exactly. Every other agenda except the second man up can just be scored out of hand. And self destruct chips out of hand is just so mean. So mean to the yeah. runner. The, the biggest problem in this deck is definitely economy. I, I don't have enough economy. <laughs> right, well, yeah, unfortunately, engineering the future not only is money, but it's also more money the longer the game goes, and it's recovery from Siphon, and it's everything you could possibly want in an ID. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I, I don't know if this deck concept would work that well in ETF, because you really are trying to leverage the hand size element. But at the same time, like I spent a lot of time clicking for credits with this deck, and I've been tweaking the economy. Eventually, I got rid of the successful demo. I think I put in, oh, there was a melange and something else. I can't remember. Oh, a green level. I put a green level and a melange in because I knew that I, you know, I had this kind of clicking for credit problem. So I decided to put those in. Um, I didn't get enough playtests with that iteration to really make a call. But that was the biggest problem with this deck. You know, with all the brain damage stuff, uh, the agenda density. I didn't have enough econ, essentially. Mm. And he lets whatever that is stand. Um, I put it behind ice, signaling that I wanted to protect it. So this is the disadvantage about man-ups, is that you can't, you, you couldn't bluff it out like this uh, as a, a three-pointer. I don't know. I, I could still probably advance this once. Looks like I'm going to score it out. Might just be of one advanced or uh, Vitruvius. Oh, <laughs> okay. I'm advancing twice. <laughs> Interesting. So, I think this is the the kind of thing where you're you're trying to tell them, oh, I definitely have a Ronin here. Huh. I don't know how to read this. But no one man, ever buys weird. it. Because Ronin is, I think it. Ronin's four influence. It is. It is. Yeah. So basically, when people try and bluff you with a Ronin like this, just look at the, the their ID card, and if it's not red, you can probably just run that. <laughs> I think it, it, it looks to me like, I don't remember exactly what happens here, but it looks to me like I'm trying to get a mandatory upgrades through. And there's Haley triggering it. That might be the first time Haley's triggered. You know, I, I, was, I was just really thinking that. <laughs> It's really hard. I, I noticed her ability. Like, I tried to make it work, like, every turn, like you can sometimes do with Kate, and it's too hard. You can't actually draw quickly enough. Right. He, he is getting set up, though, because he has Magnum Opus out, and he has four more cards coming out of that Earthrise Hotel. Sure, totally. I mean, he, so, he might have uh, set himself a little bit behind when he trashed those Adonises, but it was totally worth it. All right, now we get to see what's going on here. Oh, it looks like I got it. <laughs> oh yeah! Oh, you got an extra click now. I do. Oh man! Well, it, I just I just had to advance it twice, so I actually have two more clicks on the turn. Right. Yeah. 
mandatory upgrades. So I actually tried a deck, uh, a Valley Grid Cybernetics deck, and then um, I actually just tried the same deck in Engineering the Future, and it totally worked. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, that was what, weird. What was the ice layout? Uh, I was running, like, Next um, and Geary Labyrinth. And just end, end the run stuff, stuff that needed that needed to be broken. Right. And then also uh, punitive three pointers. All right. So Adam is pretty well set up now, and probably can get into whatever serve he wants with a little bit of effort. The biggest. Uh, risk here for cybernetics is R&D. My hand is, I, I have a pretty good pipeline going with those motion notions, so any any agenda I draw or any trap I draw, I'll just motion notion. And uh, so R&D is what I need to focus on defending. And just like that, he has breakers online now, Gordian Blade and self-modifying to go fetch whatever else. He's sitting at 12 credits, enough to pay for whatever. Sure. And the boxy out, putting him back up to five hand size. And he could pull out the RDI. Um, he has RDI ready to go to. Yeah, so I, you know, I, I could see that he's building up for an R&D run here pretty soon. Probably going to expect Lady to be popped with that self-modifying. Here's the third Musha notion of the game. <laughs> they were shuffled back in with uh, Jackson Howard. I think the deck has two Jackson Howards. So I wasn't able to fit a third copy. Sure. Well, I mean, y you know fewer cards, you don't need it as badly. I actually run two Jacksons even in some 49 card decks because, you know, you're running some other kind of recursion, it's not so big of a deal. And what's pretty nuts now is I could, in one turn, play Mushin Notion twice. Oh my gosh, that's so good! <laughs> if I could draw them. Oh. I, I hope I used my second click that turn. I, I didn't actually keep track. I think I Mushin Notion then maybe took a couple credits or maybe I drew a card in there. So the combo is, you have Mushin, you motion, I mean, mandatory upgrades. You motion out two, five, three agendas. And then next turn, you advance, advance, score, advance, advance, score. <laughs> yeah, and uh, <laughs> score more points than you need, even. Oh, man. Stim hack, here we go. Stim hack in R&D. Stim hack against cybernetics, and he doesn't even care. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, your, hand, your, your five hand size is uh, 45 free credits. That's what it is. And I'm thinking about this Mushin Notion play, and I think he could pretty safely ignore it, because if I can just fast advance out all my agendas, why would he run something that's probably not an agenda? And so right. that's where the mind game is. That, you know, maybe I put it out there just to save money. I mean, that could right. just be an, like an ABT, or maybe I'm trying to score a second mandatory upgrade. So those are all possibilities. Or maybe I just put a trap down because I'm not really thinking things through well. I think motioning it is the uh, is it, an agenda is the right move because because of the mind game. He goes, well, you could just score it, and so you're like, yeah, it's just a money card at this point. Because uh, he can't risk it being an overrider. Right. Especially if he's playing the stim hack. He'd overwrite his own. So brain. I mean, he installed. Corroder with self modifying, and he dropped down the parasite with Haley. The data sucker? Yeah. I said, yeah, I said parasite. I meant to say data sucker. Those two in my mind just are equal. So like, I don't I don't see them as <laughs> Something fantastic and here comes uh, about Haley is that, you know, you have your third breaker in hand. Your, your self modifying code is two breakers now. Okay, and. He does not. He looks like he saw some ice, but he gets a parasite, and he also installed from the workshop that RDI. So, the RDI threat was definitely what he was going after. And hidden Akamasu, which he doesn't even need right now. He's in that five memory used of six. Boxy's, Boxy given two memory. Boxy's and really two hand good, man. Ah, oh, jeez, what do you do about her? Yeah, you know, there's a few players in our meta who've been using that card since it was released in various decks, and it's just, it's a, it's a very, like, solid, moderate console. It's not flashy, you wouldn't probably use it in Criminal, but it's one influence, and it's really good in Shaper at the very least, and I think some Anarchs will sometimes want it too, just when they have a lot of cards to draw, and Anarchs like memory. Oh, well, and it's also really good in, uh, like, a combo-y deck card combos, so you have a hand size of 7, now you can hold on to your emergency shutdowns, plus your inside jobs. I've considered running it in Leela before. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, I think it is supposed to be Leela's console. Is it? 
So thematically, oh, that makes boxing. sense at the very Get least. It. Oh yeah. Yeah, she's a she's a boxer apparently, punching unres cards back into the corpse hand. All right, so he's <laughs> running in. No res. Okay, and he trashes. It's your third Adonis. No. Yeah, the Adonis, Adonis is gone. He's Edward I did shuffle an, one back in, so there's another Adonis somewhere in the deck, but he's doing a great job of suppressing my econ. I might just need to spend my turns uh, clicking for four credits, which is not quite as good as clicking for eight credits with Magnum Opus, but, you know, you, get, you take what you get. Sure. Um, yeah, I actually tried Melange in this ID. I am inclined to believe that Melange is the way to go in this ID. Because uh, yeah. you can bluff it as a snare. Uh, you can run snares in your HQ, which is good because you only have four cards. Early MP. Yeah. Looks like uh, looks like kills off the table. <laughs> yeah, I, I, it's going to be hard to... I mean, he would have needed to run like that overrider there, assuming that is an overrider. That is the winning agenda. That's, that's mm -hmm. what you got to tell him. <laughs> Brain chips. So what? He's down to three hand size now, right? Uh, he's got uh, minus four, plus two. So yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> that's beautiful. So now, now uh, overrider is uh, actually a big threat. So now I might be able to might be able to use motion ocean again <laughs> and get another agenda through. Jeez, that's fantastic. Because if, if he runs the an overrider at three, I have one neural EMP in hand, so that just wins the game. Right. Or if he hits like a like a lab dog. I know you're running lab dog in this deck, right, Brian? You know what? I, I did have it in there initially, but I very quickly took it out. It actually, <laughs> the runner chooses, don't they? They choose the card that gets trashed. Yeah, and that, that's the that's the problem with that. Like there there's a lot of hardware right now, and a be a lab dog. Initially, looks like it looks great. You can just trash a hardware, and then you realize, oh, it's the runner trashes, and then it doesn't look so great. Yeah. Yeah, but at least it's not a it's not like a illicit ice or anything like that. Yeah, and it's it's two to res. It's cheap, but it is a deck slot, and I don't Agreed. know. I, I want the Agreed. deck slot more than I want them not to have a clone ship. You know. And that's that's the reason. Well, I mean, it's kind of interesting because clone ships are huge too. You, do you double okay. advance that, but you didn't put it on the card? Uh, well, I think I'm giving him time because he has a clone chip out. So I'm just giving him time to um, go get clot if he wants to. Sure. All right, so, so I think we're at six, six points yeah. now. And I could uh, fast advance next turn. If I have an agenda in hand, I could, I could fast advance it out. doesn't look like he has clot in the deck, so... So he, this, uh, is, this is what's going to win the game. He's going to pull out turntable... Out of nowhere, after um, <laughs> trading in his boxy, and then he's going to trade away your mandatory upgrades and your self-destruct champs. <laughs> you know, I uh, when I first played turntable, the, the first opportunity I had to use turntable, I pulled a mandatory upgrades, which was great, but the only agenda he had scored at the time was a mandatory upgrades. Oh no! <laughs> oh, that's so sad. And he also had a one-pointer score, and I was like, ah, I kind of don't want to swap this mandatory upgrades for a one-pointer, so I'll just keep it and not trigger the concept. Right, that's one so where Adam you is doing trigger. the Adam is doing the correct thing. He's going into R and D. So if he if he does this and I can't stop him, he will win the game. Because I, you know, I don't think I have another agenda in hand. It's possible I do, but um. So he's just gonna go for the R and D lock. Yeah, and that's RDI. gonna be very hard for me to stop because he has two R D I sure, out now. Sure, that is that is the correct. Uh, and he's, hey, why not throw down Akamatsu with that? Okay, see, Mushin Notion, Architect, and Hedge now, Fund. So I got lucky there. When you look at the picture on Mushin Notion, and then we look at you holding Mushin Notion, it's like a parallel, really. You're holding all the cards, <laughs> yeah. Brian. I think he has to drop a card, maybe. No, uh, I guess he's okay. <laughs> oh, man. I don't even think you forced any cards. I think the only card he's been forced to discard was the one from the... Stim hack. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that could be. No, he's he's playing around that well. It's it's the problem with the ID is it's almost kind of easy to play around. I'm not sure. Cybernetics is so so weird. 
The, the thing that attracts me about it the most is the 40 cards. The 40 card HB is really intriguing. Sure, sure, absolutely. It's like. Or am I being ignorant? Is there another 40 card HB that I'm forgetting? Uh, n no, no, no. Uh, Custom okay. Biotics is, is 45, and uh, so is the yeah, gen. Um, next design. They're all 45, right? Yeah, they are. That's the first one. Yeah. Here we go, Mushin Notion. <laughs> Okay, so that that's definitely a trap, right? Because right, that's that would be a wise move. <laughs> yeah, that that's definitely, and I, I get to take a couple credits to finish out my turn. And he, he sits back and just looks at that, and is probably correctly guessing that that is some garbage that he does not want to run in on. Uh, it's either it's either two things. It's I mean, logically, it's not uh, another self destruct or a Vitruvius or an ABT. It could be a moosh, uh, a mandatory upgrades that you could be. You yeah. know, you're trying to bait him to run in situations like this, like. He has to run it. For that reason, I don't run it. I'm not. I'm not gonna run something I have to run. I'm gonna lose my yeah, own I, way. I, I, just based on the number of cards in the deck, I know there's three overriders we haven't seen, and then there's one more mandatory upgrades. So it's almost certainly an overrider. And I think I'm just trying to relieve pressure pressure from R and D. So, you know, if he runs that, I can just win the game. Sure. Um, so he's probably not gonna run that, but you know. The other option was to try and get more ice in R&D, and I, I don't know if... I guess, uh... I don't, yeah, I don't know if I had ice in hand. I might not have any... There's an Architect coming up next, which will be nice. Yeah, it's going to be hard to break this R&D lock, though. With no Econ. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he just needs to keep running R&D. That's, that's definitely the right move. And he knows it's Architect and Hedge Fund, so I'm going to draw the Architect and presumably put that over R&D, and then he forces me to Resent next, and then... Oh, my God. That oh, is it's another map! I called it, man. I called it. Yeah, I... I, uh, I, mean, couldn't I, I was it. just. I think I was in a position where I just needed to do that, right? I think uh, that's kind of interesting, because that's a fantastic move, because it's a trap. It's a trap. Brian, that was a trap. But it was Yeah, it, it should have been. I mean, <laughs> it statistically should have been a trap. Been a trap. <laughs> like every er, there's every reason that was a trap and I think I mean, Adam it, still made the right call. You can't really run that. He would have just lost if that was a was a trap. Right? It's like it's like one of those situations where your opponent's on game point, you have to run it even if it's a trap, which is why it, it's good for it to be a trap. But right, and which, um, which is why you can't run it, but Which is why you, you can't run it cuz uh, well, and then we have that additional note that Unlike Jinteki, uh, you know, if it was a, if it was an agenda you could have scored from hand, you would have just scored it from hand. So right. that's even more indication that it's a trap. So sneaky. But based <laughs> on the agendas he saw, he kind of knew the layout of my agenda. He saw everything, so he knew that the only thing it could be was a mandatory upgrades if it was an agenda. Right. Um, right. Yeah, I forgot about that. So the motions did work. Oh yeah, the, the motions were entirely what won me that game. Huh. It wasn't even really me playing. It was just the, the fact that I had motion notion in that deck. Interesting. Do you run, so do you run snares? No. No snares. It's it's only EMPs. EMPs and motions are all uh, the influence. Jackson. I think so. What are motion uh, two influence or three? I think it's three. Yeah, so I think that's why. I think that's 9, and then 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yep, that's it. So two EMPs, three Mushin, oh, two. and two Jackson is Mushin all of the influence. Oh, it's two. Okay, then there's something else in there I'm forgetting then. Um, yeah, I can't remember. There's two EMP. I remember that was a thing. I, I was like, I, I didn't think I would really get that many kills, but I wanted, I wanted there to be the threat at least. I wanted them to see EMP and know that... You know, and that probably affect like he might have run into that remote if he wasn't seeing EMP. He might have taken that risk. Right, but right. I just think him right, seeing absolutely. EMP might have influenced that decision. So uh, I think neural EMP in there just, just because is good for that reason. So I think that's a fantastic include. Yeah, and that's why I I only wanted two. I was like, if I have three, I don't think the. You know, you also have a problem with the hand size. Like you have four hand size in cybernetics, so you can't really hold on to three EMPs. Right. But right. you right. could hold on to one, and you could eventually hold on to two. And then, yeah, so it's it's a problem with cybernetics. But, all right, well, that was the game. Any last comments on that? Uh, it's a weird game, man. I don't even know what's going on in this game anymore, dude. 
Turns out, <laughs> turns out, you just play HP like Jinteki, and you use it to score mandatory upgrades, and then you're free fall, free sailing from there. You know, and I, I think if I didn't have that Mushin notion in hand right there, I think I'd probably just lose that game because I don't think I had a way out of that R and D lock, and he had a he had everything he needed to get into that server every second turn or third turn or whatever. Um, well, he had so I he only had two points though, so I mean it's kind of a a long. Yeah, but I didn't have Econ, and he had, you know, his infinite magnum opus Econ, and he had two R&D interfaces, and uh, oh, I want to keep saying Parasite, and Data Sucker out, so he had a way to continuously get into R&D, and I didn't really have an answer for that, other than slowly drawing ice, and slowly installing ice, and slowly clicking for credits. It just, uh, sure. I was losing that race, I think. Sure. All right, so uh, thanks everyone for watching, and uh, we will have s some more games up on the channel very soon. Thanks, Brian.